friends after knowing the controlling factors of weathering agents of weathering we shall try to understand how these two are bringing about the different types of weathering in nature based on the nature of the weathering process and the kind of materials produced due to weathering we are able to identify different types of weathering one is the process second the nature of the material produced and these two are due to the influence of the agents as well as the controlling factors so we have now physical weathering another chemical weathering and biological weathering how do we distinguish how exactly these are operated in a nature and what are the consequences of that physical weathering it reduces the rock material to smaller and smaller fragments physical that atmospheric agents attack on the rock bring about the physical weathering as a result the rocks are broken into smaller and smaller fragments that are easier to transport thus expose the unweathered rocks we have a rock weathered removed unweathered part is exposed the physical weathering is responsible for breaking of this rock and remove it what is the role of physical weathering it removes break and the smaller smaller material produced increase the exposed surface area just now we have mentioned if i have this material this is one surface this is another surface. another 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 if we count what is the total surface area if i break here the surface area increases because one more face one more face developed here two more faces are developed of this size below it of this size below it there's two more surfaces it means physical breaking of the rock may increases the surface area and thereby making the rock vulnerable for further physical attack or chemical attack it increases the surface area for physical and chemical attack that the what is the physical role of increasing the surface area for and then removes the material or facilitate small and smaller fragment to form that can be removed by other agents therefore fresh and fresh surface is exposed chemical weathering is the process in which rocks are broken down by chemical decay of minerals there it was a disintegration here it is a decomposition it occurs when air and water chemically react with the rock to alter its composition and mineral content mineral composition is changed chemical reactions change the original primary mineral to another mineral secondary mineral or compounds that are stable at the surface environment one in one mineral changed over to another mineral these are through process called oxidation hydrolysis and hydration solution these are some important even carbonation is also there some important process through which the composition of the minerals are changed that is a chemical weathering this process is called decomposition they change the composition of the rocks or mineral and thus bring about further weathering now this is a biophysical process just now as you see the originally when it was a small plant it started growing between these two rock like such small cracks 
as the plant grown it widened and the rocks are broken plant roots growing between the fracture zone exert an expansive force on the rocks and thus create a new fracture by pressure when this material and this material now pressure this may crack further here here like that thus they break the rock they increase the pressure they create a new fracture thus they bring about the weathering physical weathering we shall continue it is the process in which physically bro rocks are broken into smaller and smaller part if i have a big rock if i break it with pressure crush it it is nothing but a simple physical weathering so breakdown of rock into smaller pieces and the small piece in all respect is similar to the large rock from which they are broken i have a dip. this is a rock i have broken physically this fragment this fragment in all respect similar to this in terms of their composition in terms of their color in terms of many of their properties in all respect they are similar to their parent but it does not alter the chemical composition chemical composition between this and this has not changed physical weathering merely breaking the material into smaller and smaller pieces thus by breaking rocks into smaller pieces physical weathering increases the surface area for chemical attack once it is broken down surface area increases atmospheric agents can easily attack thus physical weathering paves the way for chemical weathering physical weathering there are different types mode of one is a frost wedging and block disintegration exfoliation it is due to thermal expansion and contraction then we have spheroidal weathering and salt pressure release and salt crystal growth these are all different types of physical weathering under a different set of conditions what are those for example frost action in i have shown himalaya example i gave in a high altitude there snow formation is so common if we have a cracks like this water can enter into the cracks and during night if temperature fall below zero this can freeze water on freezing exerts pressure high pressure so during the day water seeps into the joints cracks and during night when temperature fall below the water freezes and turns into ice in doing so it expands by about 10% and thus there is nearly 40% or more or increase in the pressure on the wall of this so if this process continue night freezes exert pressure cracks are here original size here original size original size, cracks are widened 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 as they widen more and more water enter they more widen one day they fall and escape thus how over a time after repeated freezing and thawing the rock splits sh into sharp edges and rocks broken the pieces of rocks are called scree when they fall here yeah. they roll down all along the mountain side and build up a piles in the bottom of the hill slope so this is the process of frost wedging this is similar common in high mountainous area slightly different in a desert area we know in a desert area daytime temperature is so high and rocks warm warm 
etc. There may be occasional rainfall or during night temperature fall, very low temperature because of this repeated contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion. Even occasional rainfall, that is enough rocks are broken into rock shattering we call. Even today our villages, farmers we find if there is a huge rock boulder in their field, they put fire on it and they pour suddenly water. Sudden cooling results in the shattering of the rocks into smaller and smaller fragments. Therefore, it is also called often block disintegration, block shattering, often with a hissing sound. Therefore, this kind of weathering in desert region, it is temperature effect. Here, here it is a snow effect or freezing and thawing. This kind of weathering is called frost wedging. And here this is a kind of important physical weathering. No doubt that the broken material in all respect is similar to the unbroken parent material in its composition and color property except the size, size of the material. And the resulting blocks are angular. The parent material at the top of this slope is fractured, then susceptible to frost wedging. The angular pieces of rocks have accumulated at the base of the slope. Now, the next is exfoliation. These are all common in Gulbarga, Vijapur district, if you have seen. Similarly, in Raichur, Kapal, Hyderabad, this kind of weathering that is spheroidal weathering. What is exfoliation and spheroidal weathering? Common inner jointed rocks, originally they were jointed like this. This was like this, this was like this, jointed rocks. Originally they were jointed rocks, atmospheric agents started penetrating along the joint and layer by outer layer, then internal layer, then internal layer like this. If I have a, if I have a rock, this outer layer first form, then second layer, then second layer, then second layer, layer by layer they are weathered. If you cut across, onion shell like structure is produced. So, onion skin like or shell like structure is formed layer by layer because rocks are bad conducted to heat internal layers are not affected only outer layer is heated cooled heated cooled become weak and tend to escape from the inner cooler surface once a weak plane is developed, atmospheric agents are able to attack on the inner layer. Inner layer also become weak because of cooling, heating, cooling, heating and become weak. A weak plane is developed through which atmospheric agent can penetrate internal layer. Thus, especially they started with a joint plane. Such this plane, originally these are the joint plane like this, from this joint plane they started. Thus, they started with the joint plane, penetrating deeper and deeper. At the end, we have onion shell like structure that is called exfoliation. This is a physical weathering, generally common in jointed rocks. Another process is called a spheroidal weathering. This rock is not jointed like that, but massive. Similar process, but heating, cooling, heating, cooling, rocks are bad conductor, outer layer tend to escape from the inner cooler layer and then atmosphere can gradually attack into small inner layer, inner layer, inner layer like that. At the end, we have boulders, smooth round surface. If you travel by train from here to go, Vijap, Raichur, Kapal, Hyderabad, you find 
such kind of rocks, beautiful structure. And all these are rounded, rounded, rounded like this. This is a spheroidal weathering. It is common in massive plutonic rocks like granite. Rounded boulders like features, skin by skin weathering, skin by skin there also. Common in moderate to low rainfall. Warm climate like Raichur, Koppal, Hyderabad. Change in temperature from day to night or from summer to winter is an important characteristic feature here as here. Under this kind of weathering process, these are produced. Now, what are the consequences of this in civil engineering? We will discuss later. Pressure release. For example, these were a kind of layered rocks over which there was a kind of pressure. If you remove this material, maybe soil layer, this plane and this plane, this plane. Now, load is removed. Originally, there was a kind of a bedding plane. Now, removal of a load, they tend to, because of expansion. In those removal of overlying rock, underlying like rock, underlying rock expand and fractures, sheets, bedding plane, joint surfaces are developed. These are all the joint planes like this, like this. One support I mean, go cock, riverbed if you have seen and on the road cutting also you must have seen fresh road cutting you see. You find it different, very hard, compact and in the go cock riverbed different layers you can see so clearly. Between the layers there is a gap on the road, fresh road cutting. These layers are so hard enough. It is because of a removal of the pressure from the top. That is a pressure release. Now, what is the message for this? Suppose I have a rock. It is massive today because there was a pressure. If I remove the pressure from the top, it tends to expand, cracks, joints develop. It means the rock becomes weak. So, in the civil engineering activities, many often I put a pressure or I remove the pressure. What are the consequences of these on the underlying rock? If I know, I can take better precaution about and thus manage our construction activities. This is one more. Salt crystal rocks are composed. These are all. So, it is not total chemical weathering, not totally physical weathering, but selective removal here and there, here and there, some salt materials if removed or salt crystals grow. On the seashore, if you have seen, there may be rocks fractured, fractures like this. If this is the sea, sea waves often come and bring the water here. And whatever the water represent here, they are stored in the cracks. And over a time, they become crystal. And those crystals exert pressure on the crack. Cracks can be widened. And here, some cracks, cracks, if then once the cracks form, next waves come, those boulders or fragments, they remove this kind of structures are produced. So, this kind of weathering is due to salt formation, cracks formation and removal of the cracks by waves, etc. These are common. Salt crystal growth. Important in arid and coastal area. I have quoted the example of coastal area. It is also true in arid zone. Such kind of now salt weathering results on the building material, how building material is affected. If you see some of the rocks or Badami, I hold a particular somewhere in the rocks you find because of weathering effect you do find. And elsewhere also. So as a result of here honeycomb surface like formed. In a way, it damages our architectural material or buildings, monuments. Therefore, 
depending on the climate and the rock we have to take care. Chemical weathering as we said decomposition the process by which rocks are broken down by chemical decay of materials or minerals. It occurs when air and water chemically react with the rocks and alter the composition of the mineral or rock content. Chemical reaction change the original primary minerals into secondary minerals or compounds that are stable at the surface environment. Just now we have defined. There are different processes of a weathering, oxidation, hydrolysis, hydration, carbonate or carbonation and so on. These are a different mode of chemical weathering. And this individually may operate together, oxidation, hydrolysis, hydration or carbonation or together or in stages, in the first stage only oxidation then hydration like that. In the nature they may operate individually or together in steps or together, face by face. Example, this is a beautiful cave in a limestone, the complete removal of material and a cave is produced. Now you see beautiful here a hard material is formed. Because of hard material it protected the rock below it, this is not decomposed, disintegrated and on the other hand here a plain topography is developed. Resistant rock protects the surface because this, this rock, black rock is resistant for chemical weathering. Whereas this rocks undergone chemical weathering, plain land developed. But by covering of these, this black rock protected the rock below it. This is resistant. Similarly here, this is one more view you see. And here they have protected here. And but here they, there was some other material weathered faster. This is much faster. Therefore, different undulation, different landforms are produced as a result of a different type and degree of a weathering process. What is oxidation? Just now we have mentioned, since oxygen, free oxygen is available in nature plenty. It may react with the minerals to change the oxidation state of an ion. It is especially common if rocks consist minerals rich in iron. Example I have given, Fe can have several oxidation states, FeO, Fe2O3, Fe3O4 like this. I have given an example, Fe plus O2, Fe2O3, Fe is iron, this is oxygen. Iron combined with oxygen finds iron oxide, I have balanced, that is Fe2O3 is a name of a mineral called hematite. Similarly, iron can combine with oxygen at different and forms, sorry, equation here in between missing, Fe2, Fe3O4, that is a magnetite. Hematite or magnetite are two different iron minerals converted into oxide, iron combined with oxygen, iron combined with oxygen formed hematite or magnetite. In the first stage, carefully see, this is iron oxide. Now it has combined with water, hydration. Hydrated iron oxide is formed, nothing but limonite. In all respects, similar to Rusting of iron. What is the rusting of iron? First phase oxidation, second phase hydration, iron become very weak. Rusting of iron is an example. Another example I give iron combined with sulfur FeS2, similar way iron plus S2 depends on the environment. Okay, reducing environment, we have a lot of sulfur, etc. common in atmosphere. Fe combines with sulfur forms FeS2. Then this FeS2 combines with oxygen and water. 
as here first oxygen and then water similarly here oxygen then water i gave directly one relation i a first fe and s fes2 fes2 plus o2 and h2 then gives feso4 plus h2so4 feso4 is a iron sulfate relatively stable H2SO4 is a sulfuric acid which can attack further on the rocks below. Therefore, the, through the series of chemical reactions, a chemically active agent is also developed. Original mineral is also altered. Therefore, now you see hard iron material, how it got into limonite. Limonite is a soft mineral, you can crush it. These are all through chemical process directly, individually, in combination with water here, in combination with water here in different stages. A mineral can be altered into carbonication or carbonation. One of the most well known weathering process by solution is carbonation. It is the process in which atmosphere carbon dioxide leads to solution weathering, that is carbon dioxide is involved, combined with water. Carbonation occurs on the rocks which contain calcium carbonate, other minerals also it can, I start with simple carbon dioxide and limestone, how it happens. This is a limestone, calcium carbonate, this is calcium carbonate. So this is common in limestone. How the reaction takes place? We have atmosphere carbon dioxide, atmosphere H2O in atmosphere. They combine and give rise to H2CO3 that is carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide in the air and water combined produced carbonic acid. The carbonic acid reacts with the calcium carbonate mineral, bicarbonate soluble and removed. This is chemical process. Yes. Now water does in another hydration is one solution. Attachment of water molecule to crystalline material and damage the structure, so structure of the rock causing expansion and weakness. Example, minerals like a halite, a salt mineral dissolves in water because the attraction between the water molecule and the sodium chloride in the mineral ions are greater than this. and the because the bonding between them was weak and then bonding is weakened by water molecule and chemical reactions or bonding is broken and they are separated or broken down so this is hydration and solution together. Halite is dissolved, first the sodium molecules, the removed, etc. Yes. Another example I am trying to give is orthoclase feldspar. It is a silicate mineral, KALSI3O8. In nature, we have water and carbon dioxide. They form water and carbon dioxide carbonic acid they form, we know. Now that reacts with orthoclase feldspar that get converted into clay mineral, K combines with carbon and K2CO3, potassium carbonate, it is a soluble, easily can be removed. And the, in the reaction, SiO2 is released, now you see that is quartz clay dissolved and then we have this quartz, I'm sorry, this is clay, this is a dissolved and this is quartz. So we have kaolinite, this is a dissolved, this is quartz. What do we find on the today's on the beach? If we have a from the mountain rocks are weathered, decomposed, we have sand on the beach. It is nothing but this sand. Clay minerals, you have this clay mineral. Then here we have carbonate. 
if you go to C, if this is the land, if this is the sea, on the beach we have sand and up to here also we have sand. Then here we have only clay mineral and here this dissolved material added to C and carbonate deposition excess or they convert the C composition into saline. Fresh water added to C, their composition changes because adding of these soluble salts into C, C water becomes saline plus between 8 to 20 meter, 30 meter, 50 meter water depth you find only clay, nothing else, not even a single rock fragment or sand like. All the sand are confined between 8 meter to surface of beach. Thus we have sand, we have clay and then dissolved material. These are common. These are all result of the chemical weathering. What the biological weathering do? The process of weathering mainly related to activities of various organisms. One is the growing roots, second is the decay and decomposition of vegetal matter which produces a humic as substances like that. This also support bacterial activity that also increases combined effect is biophysical process. Biophysical, biological process involved in breaking, physical breaking. Biochemical, adding substances like this humic substance to the soil or create a bacteria which can further, there are so many bacteria which require iron, which require carbonate, which require silica and they also change the composition of the soil or the rock and therefore bring about weathering. Now this is a beautiful example, presence of plants and animals. Animals growing, we know earthworms, they dig like that, bring the soil from deeper to the shallow and we know organisms, rodents, earthworms, ants bring material to the surface and that exposed to surface and atmospheric agents can attack further. We have a kind of a weathering through mediation of plants and animals we call biophysical weathering, biological weathering. Now, this is in general what are the common rock forming minerals, feldspar. It produces clay rich material, it loses N and K which are soluble. Mica, it also produces clay mineral, removal of K. Quartz, this is another common mineral in granite, it is quartz only. Quartz and feldspar, but feldspar is removed, mica is removed like this, quartz we have. FEMG minerals are also there in granite. This FEMG minerals results in clay mineral, some hematite and goethite. Mg is removed part. Basalt, we have another type of feldspar. This is orthoclase feldspar, this is plagioclase feldspar. NaCa rich, here it is potassium rich. Clay minerals are produced, Na and K are removed. FEMG minerals, Mg is removed, clay minerals are produced. Magnetite, hematite, they not altered. So limestone, it consists of calcite, so nothing is left completely, it is dissolved and removed. Thus, it depends on the composition, we can classify different type of rocks, their responses to weathering. These are the common rock forming minerals in the common process. What is soil? We have discussed so far a different type of weathering process. Ultimately, weathering results in a kind of loose material we call the raw soil. Soil is nothing but the end product of weathering is called soil. Soil are formed due to disintegration of the rocks. This is a very slow process. 
on an average to form a, an inch of soil in the 600 to 800 years are required. But one heavy flood, heavy rain is enough to remove one inch layer of soil. Soil is so important, we will come to know later. So this is a very slow process and depends on various factors like the parent rock, the climate, the topography of the region, the plants and uh, the organisms, all this flora and fauna, plants, flora, animals that is fauna of the region, age of the rock, all those things decide the rate of soil forming process, climate and composition of the rock together determine the kind of soil formation, etc. And soil we know so important, nothing grows on the without soil. So, factor that influence is the parent rock, just now we have mentioned. It is the in-situ rock that originated in that place, which on within in-situ rock is from there, on which we have the soil formation. This is by weathering process. Soil will carry the characteristic of its parent material. The parent rock depends on the chemical or atmospheric agents, a kind of soil is formed, means parent rock determine the kind of soil. So, the color of the soil, its a composition, its a structure, texture are all depends on the rock, parent rock from which. For example, if soil are formed from an area with large rock, parent rock, the red sandstone say, the soil also carry red. I have mentioned two, three examples. If a sandstone is red and resulting soil formation, soil also will be red. It all depends on composition of the soil. We have mentioned along the coast of Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, although we have different parent rock because of climate control, all we have a lot, right? Yes, we have mentioned. We have mentioned an example of a Goka or elsewhere coastal Karnataka. We have here also granite, here also granite. But here granite formed some kind of rock, here granite forms some kind of rock. On the coastal belt, granite forms lateritic soil. In a Gokok or Naragund and Algund, we have granite formed a black bottom soil. Depends on the climate. This a type of soil formed is a function of both the composition of the rock and the atmosphere together. Therefore, we are able to trace both its parent as well as the climate. Yes, so what is soil profile? You see, a soil profile is a vertical section of the weathered, different weathered cross section. Each layer has a different composition. We can classify them into horizon O, A, B, C, R like. Each layer is different in terms of the texture, composition, accordingly it is a function. So these layers are termed like this. What is O layer? Is the topmost layer. The top layer which consists of completely weathered soil mixed with the organic material such as the decomposition of leaves, etc. We have insects, microorganisms that is the topmost soil, that horizon O. A horizon, A horizon, often they are together discussed in many cases, especially in agriculture science. They distinguish different. For us, it is one and the same. This layer also consists of top soil. This is the layer where the seeds germinate here also as well as here also germinate and plant roots thrive. This layer consists of sand and silt. The minerals and clay have been removed by the from here if that is this is percolated soil and removed by the process of alluviation, transport of soil material into further. So this is 
the B horizon, this is B horizon. So also C horizon, D horizon, R horizon we will discuss. The soil present in this layer is also called as subsoil. The minerals and clay that was removed by alluvium process in A horizon gets deposited in this layer from A or from O horizon also removed whatever they get deposited in this layer. Percolating water carries them suspended material, soluble materials get precipitated or deposited here. The process of this deposition is called alluviation. Horizon C below that, this layer is called the regolith. You find the broken rock fragments and little organic material. This layer can be termed uh, to be weathered rock. It is not strictly soil, not a rock, but weathered rock. The material here is generally coarse grained and pebbly and retains all the evidence of its parent rock. R horizon. This refers to unconsolidated rock or solid bed rock which is yet to be altered. It is beginning of alteration. So, what is the consequence of this? We will discuss shortly. So, soil we classify based on its composition, based on its um, where they are located, etc. Based on composition, a residual or a lateritic soil, this soil commonly consists of gibbsite, iron oxide, silica. Carefully remember, all the soil, these have the reddish brown color, less swelling, less sinkage capacity. This is the character of residual soil. I have a parent rock disintegrated, decomposed. During decomposition, some materials are left behind, some materials are transported. Those which have left behind is this type of soil, residual soil. Okay. They have this property, therefore important from the point of engineering construction. We have another type of soil we call black cotton soil. These are rich in Montmorillonite, kaolinite, illite. Parent rock, parent rock, weather disintegrated, something left behind, something transported. Obviously, in the process, coarser materials are left behind, finer materials get transported either in solution or in suspension. Both those which are carried in suspension are obviously fine material, they devil deposit somewhere and they result Mount Molinite, Kaolinite, Illite, etc. These are all clay minerals. They have high swelling capacity, high sinkage capacity and if this is the kind of soil, we have problem in construction. Example, if I have a residual soil, as I go deeper and deeper soil profile just now we have seen as we go deeper and deeper, this is the regolith like, partially weathered, unweathered like. As you go deeper, soil condition harder, harder, harder. And if we have a foundation here, we have a better load bearing capacity. If you go here, it's still better. But here, the load bearing capacity is weak because of these are clay silt rich. This is in case of in situ, yes. Now, those which are transported, we have the black cotton soil and they are all transported. So, during transportation, if this is a parent, if this is the parent rock, parent rock weathered, parent rock weathered, and they left some materials here, we call a residual, some materials are transported and deposited here. And based on composition, if they are rich in this kind of mineral, we call black cotton soil. Okay. This is one. They have mostly clay rich. This based on composition we said. Now, 
in situ soil in situ soil rock disintegrated decomposing they are not transported for any distance they are lying on the same parent rock therefore here we can have a good soil layer o layer a layer b layer c layer h layer like that sorry r layer so in case of in situ soil as you go deeper and deeper the soil weathering that is alteration decreases means they are more close to parent rock their load bearing capacity is high therefore in case of in situ soil as we go deeper and deeper unweathered unweathered rock materials we get therefore as we go deeper and deeper we have a better and better soil their load bearing capacity is higher and higher and therefore good for construction so they develop a regolith just now we mentioned highly weathered top soil below moderately weathered further below unweathered consists of rock debris this rock bears relation with the climate we have mentioned coastal karnataka maharashtra etc lithotic soil the residual soil in situ soil in many respect resemble some kind of relationship with the parent rock okay they bear relation with the climate and the rocks below it soil become harder and harder with the depth this is the characteristic of in situ soil how do i know these are the properties i get the broken fragments of the local rock in the soil i will able to understand what is the rock below i have different set of climate example we mentioned lateritic soil is characteristic of maritime climate they bear relation with the climate irrespective of the parent rock in response to climate they form a kind of soil they bear relation with the climate transported or drifted soil if rocks weathered somewhere here weathered somewhere here and got deposited here the climate is different here the climate is different rock decomposed weathered and transported and deposited here this is a drifted transported soil it was formed here and brought and deposited the rock below it was different if rock below it are different therefore this soil do not bear any relation with the rock below it at the same time climate here is thing different the climate here is different therefore this soil do not have any relationship with the climate they brought and deposited in some other soil this soil has nothing to do with the local rock correct and the thickness of the soil cover can be enormous but here the soil cover the rocks below it further they are not weathered therefore here it is possible to trace the different layers of rocks here from one layer to another layer to another layer you don't find any change at all therefore they have a different character transported or drifted soil mostly fine not framed it should be grained they are very fine grained fine particles because during transportation coarser material coarser material left behind only finer finer and carried forward transported therefore generally they are fine grained silt or clay rich they are free or poorer in rock debris rock debris are left behind very rarely they are carried they thick soil cover the here it is not possible here if it is a deep valley entire depression can be filled with this kind of soil the thick soil cover can they bear no relation with the local climate the local climate is this one the soil formed here brought here they have no relation with at all 
example, I am from Darwad. I quote the example of Darwad. From Darwad to Hubli, Darwad to Hubli, if you travel on the roadside, the right side, you have a lateritic soil, red morum type soil. To your left, you have a black cotton soil. What is that? Right side of the road, left side of the road, are the climate is different? No. Is the rock below it are different? No. But the rock to the left side of the road have black cotton soil. Rock side, uh, right side, uh, red soil, morum soil. Because that black soil was uh, transported from somewhere else. Maybe Nargunda, Navalgunda, Bijapur, whatever. From there they brought and deposited in this uh, depression. You find a Navalur is a place, a hill, you have a different type of, on the field, foothills, you have a different type of soil. How it can be different? Because those were once upon a time depression and soil came from somewhere else, got deposited here. They do not bear any relation with the local climate. And the rocks below it, rocks below it everywhere is a Darwad shale we call. Soil condition does not improve with the depth. If we have an excavation, you go deeper, here go deeper, here go deeper, the soil condition does not improve in case of transported soil. In case of in situ soil, we have this different type of layer, you have regolith. Then as you go deeper, better and better foundation condition you get. What is the consequence of this? Consequence is that in case of in situ soil, if a person wish to construct, I suggest go deeper, deeper. You get a better soil condition for foundation. If it is a transported soil, I do not advise. If we go deeper and deeper, deeper here, the soil condition does not improve. Only the cost increases, that's all. Therefore, I have to go like this, a plinth beam or something you suggest. Don't advise him to go for deeper foundation. Condition does not improve. Cost only increases. The nature of the soil profile has a profound influence on engineering. And the, not only the soil, the cost also. As the soil has more clay rich, more sinkage, swelling, etc. And deeper as you go, the cost increases. Whereas in situ soil, gibbsite, rich, iron rich, silica rich, they do not have variable property, they do not shrink, they do not swell much, they do not have variable property. And plus, if you, as you go deeper, their condition improves. What is the engineering concern? Therefore, yes, weathering is an important, it produces the soil. Soil is an important resource for construction, earth filling, soil is required. Fruits and fruits cannot grow on the rock. It has to grow on the soil. The soil loss is a national loss. India is 64, 60% of population depends on agriculture. If soil is lost, our economy is lost. The major engineering watershed management activities is conservation of the soil, nutrient conservation. That is one aspect. So, soil conservation is an important that is, it is all because of the weathering process, the type of soil, etc. Yes, we have a concern there. Second, I have to construct some structure just now we mentioned, go deeper foundation or shallow foundation or whatever, that depends on type of soil. Yes, I have to select a material for monumental construction, architectural work. What is the response of the rock to the given climate? We have said, quoted example of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Goa coast, different type of rock respond very sensitively to the climate. Climate is a factor. We have quoted the example of Namalgun, Naragund or Gokak like that. The, ir, the rocks are different. No, it is granite, granite, granite. In coastal granite, yes, we have granite. But climate is different. They have behaved differently. Now I have to select a material. 
in south india we all find in a temple construction we have selected the granite example hampi because of the high rainfall high temperature granite is resistant in lower rainfall area like uh, this uh, region like uh, badami patadkallu we have selected sandstone less rainfall halebid we have used the rock like uh, soft stone because rocks are covered structure is covered inside shravana belagula we have the structure erected on the land gomteshwar what is the climate what is the rock response of the rock i must know for taj mahal they have selected the marble in so north india they have selected the red sandstone depends on the climate and response of the rock to the climate a right material i have to select for life so there i have to select a rock for industrial towns where the rock like marble are very sensitive they may emit carbon dioxide this industry etc acid rain all this possible right kind of material i have to select for the right purpose therefore selection of material in industry depth of soil cover in a construction site that's another important matter what is the thickness of the soil cover bridge construction ps etc what is the excavation needed the type of soil the depth of soil cover matters soil erosion and then this eroded soil deposited in the reservoir siltation is a one problem in the coastal belt again a navigation problem this material deposited may build a bar like across the mouth of the river causes the river mouth shifting etc thus soil in many ways create a serious engineering problem we have to deal with it therefore knowledge of a weathering process response of the rock and kind of weathering kind of soil help us to take a better decision so with this we shall proceed thank you